back here on Jiggy Jag TV, also JiggyJagTV.com. I'm Jigman Freud, and uh, we are in the McPherson Opera House. Uh, welcomed back to the McPherson Opera House. Uh, incredible building, incredible place, and uh, I have one of the most incredible artists of our time with us today, and no, he didn't pay me to say that. Eric Hemi is with us. I'm going to get the hell out of the way and let the people with talent talk. So jump in there, Eric. How you doing, brother? Great. Well, I, I, I feel like I should be sitting on a sofa, but I'm actually on the uh, <laughs> piano bench here. And, uh, well, uh, I can tell you when it all started. Uh, let's see. Uh, it all began when I was six, and the rest has been a dream. Now, you play uh, piano. You do a number of other instruments. Uh, what do you enjoy the most about playing the piano? Well, I think what I like, especially uh, which is about the piano, which is um, innate, to the piano is that you can play anything that's ever been written. You're the entire orchestra, you know, the, the flutes and the piccolos and the drums and the violins and so forth. And, and then um, as the overseer, you're the conductor and so forth, and you're the executor, the conductor, uh, and you get a, a chance to play anything that's ever been written, basically. So that's part of the, the appeal. Now you play lots and lots of shows across the world, across the country. Um, you do a lot of recitals. Uh, you do a lot of uh, things. I understand you're going to be doing a show in February in this very same building with a uh, that's right. With a, I think it's in March, but it's in it's with uh, a, a flutist uh, uh, who's quite talented. Uh, she's on uh, uh, has a lot of YouTube uh, uh, clips that I think have been seen by millions of people. But uh, her name is Nina Perlove. Do you prefer playing by yourself, or do you prefer playing in like sort of a, a both, band? Both, like? both. Uh, I'm playing next Saturday uh, in Ithaca with an orchestra, a Chopin Concerto, uh, number one. It's the year of Chopin, 200th anniversary of his birth, 1810. Uh, tonight I'm doing Gershwin in Paris, so it's solo. Uh, there are other nights uh, where I've played with uh, a flutist uh, or a violinist, so that would be, uh, again, uh, a more intimate form of chamber music. Uh, yeah. as opposed to the concerto. And so I've done a little bit of this and that, uh, but mostly I play solo recitals. Uh, and so that's, um, in a way, uh, more challenging because for about an hour and a half to two hours, you, you've got to show everything on the piano yourself. And uh, you've got to convince the audience that you can do the full range of an orchestra and do also a very intimate sound uh, of a salon, say, of the 19th century. And uh, basically, I like to... Um, show off the resources of the instrument. That's uh, when an instrument can be really good, it gives the pianist a chance to exploit those resources by showing off the colors that are possible in the music. What kind of uh, pianos do you prefer to, to play? Because there's a wide range of them out there, a lot of manufacturers, a lot of different I like, uh, believe it or not, some of the older models that are that are been sometimes rebuilt, uh, you know, from a certain golden age. But uh, some of the new ones have been uh, doing some interesting things, you know, with um, new advances in materials and so forth. I mean, there's even a carbon fiber soundboard now that mm. I saw that can resist, uh, you know, changes in temperature. But um, ultimately, uh, I, I, I personally prefer a piano that's very, very sensitively responsive to the touch. Uh, so I don't like something that's going to be very uh, hard to play. And, uh, and ironically, that's actually harder to play a lighter action than a hard action. It's not the reverse that some people think, oh, this piano is too hard. You know, what, if you've developed the strength to play uh, an action that is a bit resistant, um, there's no problem. You, you adjust and so forth. But, um, but what makes it easy to play a hard action is that uh, it keeps you in check rhythmically. In other words, you may have not a great rhythm, but because the action is holding you in place like a good saddle, you know, on a horse, you, you will, under pressure, let's say, be less likely to rush. Whereas on a light action, you would think, oh, great, I can play now without any problem. But then go on that and do that under stress, your rhythm will be subject to the greatest challenge because it has to be really a good inner rhythm to be suddenly floating in no resistance, you see? <laughs> so, so the irony is that it's actually harder to play in a light action than on a, than a hard action. I mean, if you understood what I just said, you are a genius. <laughs> now, uh, playing across the country and playing across the world, do, do you um, 
why do you think piano music and piano performances uh, still sell in the age of everybody's got a, a band, everybody's got a rock concert, every, you know, there's all right. these bands from the 80s and the 70s going back out on tour, and there's still theaters and clubs and bars that people will just love to sit down and listen to piano music. There's something about the piano that, again, uh, you know, you can transport um, the, the sound of an entire orchestra to the uh, a small setting, or you can uh, transport the listener uh, with just a few notes to some place that's very intimate. Uh, so the piano has always held its appeal, uh, and uh, there's something immediate in the response. I would say also, uh, for some reason, the, the, the tolerance of hearing a piano uh, is greater than, say, a kazoo or a, a tuba. I mean, not to berate those instruments, but uh, you, you, could, you can have more um, pleasure in uh, uh, in listening uh, over a, a greater uh, a amount of time. So, so that uh, two hour uh, recital or an hour and a half recital may hopefully not seem so long because of the variety of possibilities. And again, because of the variety of music at uh, hand and uh, a good pianist can, can be a bit like a magician. Uh, he can create all sorts of illusions and varieties of sound, and some people will say, "Wow!" The presenters might say, "Is that was that my piano?" Do we? <laughs> <laughs> or uh, again, uh, audiences that don't know uh, will discover, you know, what the piano can be capable of. Now, uh, you know, violin and harp or brass, this, they're wonderful instruments, of course. It's just that it seems that uh, that the um, piano uh, has an ability to sustain itself on its own uh, for the longest period of time, making it the most antisocial instrument in the club. <laughs> <laughs> because if you think about it, we don't need anybody else. I mean, of course, there's people who uh, collaborate, you know, chamber music, as we were discussed earlier, but in the end, a pianist is a really lonely guy. He doesn't need anyone. He can play the orchestra, v repertoire, the operas, anything he wants. And he doesn't even have to be criticized by some fellow musician in the quartet who's going to say, what are you doing? Because he knows what he's doing. The, <laughs> Hopefully. I, I've heard it as the... <laughs> I, I've heard it maybe as the um, jack of all... Um, who's Since. relocated to the rhythm section, uh, the, the, the virtuoso, right. but uh, he's kind of the, a weird kind of percussionist, well, in uh, a way. That's <laughs> guilty. That's I mean, the point is, um, uh, it's true that uh, you, could, you could count uh, more fingers, uh, I mean, uh, pianists uh, on your hands that have probably, you know, bad rhythm <laughs> because they're so indulgent. But uh, that's why it's always good to come back to the collaboration and out of that uh, lonely place, and uh, and I do that. So um, uh, I just played in Puerto Rico uh, with some, uh, you know, a group, a cellist, a, um, a violinist, a, a big bass player, uh, viola. Uh, because when you do that, you're forced then to reevaluate what you're doing, and and it's no longer just you. It's uh, it's it becomes a, a collaboration, a team effort.